Yeah. So let's go to Paul and Henderson. Hey, Paul, what's going on, brother? Good morning, Tom. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Yeah, so crypto world. Oh, baby. Getting smoked out, huh? Yeah. So yeah. I remember what you said a long time ago. This always stuck with me. Um, it's part of one of the greatest things I think about TFNN is just the education part of it is the market takes the most amount of money from the most amount of people in the shortest amount of time. Yeah. And it looks like that's what's happening right now in the crypto market. People are getting taken to the cleaners. Oh, man, it's intense. There's no <laughs> doubt, man. There's, there's no <laughs> doubt. And, you know, I guess it's, you know, you, you look at some of these, I mean, I got, uh, what, I, I think I just got Litecoin up here, right? That just, it's under a buck right now. Mm -hmm. uh, um, 92 oh, cents, oh, I think, right? Oh, no, Ripple. That's what I just put up. I yeah. just put up Ripple. All right. Okay. And even Litecoin, you remember when I called in several weeks ago and that thing went, you know, parabolic? It's almost back to where it broke out from. Um, right now it's at 147. It broke out a little over $100 per coin. So it's quite a ride. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the real question is, like, okay, so what are we doing? What are you, you just got to sit there and wait. This is the hardest thing, right? Because you can't shot them as easy as you can buy them, right? You cannot. And I would love it if we could short them because a lot of them put in very defined topping patterns uh, yeah. to me, um, especially in, like, Ethereum. It right. would have been a great short. It's getting taken to the cleaners right now. Yeah. Um, but I tried to short it on Nadex. This was my question because I don't really understand the spreads, and I was hoping you could get me straightened out on it. Oh, cool. Um, okay. Yeah. So I did a demo. Let me look at my phone here and see what I did. So I shorted the contract on, on Tuesday. Okay. And um, let's see here. This spread was the... Um, <coughs> the 6900 to 16900 Yes. Yeah. So I thought that I was going short. So I'm confused on how these spreads work. Because yesterday this contract was up like 2,400 bucks. Today it's only up maybe like 600 bucks. Okay. So when you were shotting it, right? Are you watching my screen right now? I am. Okay. Cool. So when you're shotting it, you're hitting the bid first, right? You hit the bid. Yeah. The size is one. You, you see what we have up here right now? Because because of the way that so there's a seventy-five hundred dollar spread, folks. So this is how these work, okay? It opens in the middle, so you can see right now because it's come down. Let me put. I'm going to put this another chart up simultaneously <clears throat> on the other side. I'll, uh, XBT. Okay, so. What you're going to see is that we have gone, you know, yesterday Bitcoin went from 13,956 down to 10,300. So if you were doing this yesterday, you know, see, today, if I was selling it at 96.25, my risk maximum loss would be 7.27 because my maximum loss is up to that 16,000, okay, 900. My maximum profit is only down to 6,900. And see how the maximum profit's 272? Mm -hmm. So what you have there is that your your per contract you're talking about a thousand bucks. You see how that works? Okay. Okay. So I believe that you, you you should be in the money pretty good, right? Right now. It is in the money. Um, it just seemed like it was more in the money yesterday. Maybe I'm not looking at this correctly. And as the price was going down, I was figuring that you know it. Oh, this is on a demo, but. You know, I was thinking that this would be going more in my favor. It would it be. To. Yeah, it okay. would be. It would be. It would be, for sure. So, that, they see that profit and loss column? That should be going up yes. on you, for sure. Now, on the demo account, is, is, on the demo account, this is a real account you're looking at right now. On the demo account, is it the same bid and offer, or is it a different bid and offer? So we're at 96.10 by 97.05. It's the same. Okay. Um, yeah, well, you, you, you're going, it's going up. I, what, do you, what price did you sell it at around? Right when it came out on Monday, or uh, was it Tuesday morning? Or it would Monday be Tuesday night? morning at 8 o'clock, right. Yeah. 
Okay, let me just do this for a second. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so there it is there. So 12,113, somewhere around there. About the 12, 000, let's say 12,000 mark. So you're, you're right now you're up a couple hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be right. That'd be right. Okay. Yeah. It's the, so, so picture how it, now this is what's really cool, Paul, that you got the demo account. This is how a spread works. This is what's cool about it. The closer, when this opens up, right, it's going to open up right in the middle. So the way they price these, at eight, what they first do is this. At 8 o'clock in the morning, when they open on, normally on Mondays, right, whatever Bitcoin is trading at, right, they are going to put on each side of it, okay, uh, bottom line, they're going to open it in the middle so that you're risking 500 to make 500. And then from that okay. movement on, right, that will variate between the, your net loss and your profit. And the defined okay. risk, you can see what happens here, is that your defined risk now on buying, you know, if you're bullish, this is where this is going to get really cool for, for everyone, I think. I mean, I've been looking at this. I haven't bit yet. I was, I was, I was so close to biting yesterday, it was wicked. <laughs> because see what happens here now. Watch this, folks. Your max loss on a buy is $273. To, for a max gain of 726. Now, a max gain of 726, it would have to go up to 16,900. And I'd say that's probably unrealistic um, in the aspect of by Friday at 3 o'clock. What's not unrealistic, though, is that you remember, you heard Larry talking about the 8,800, right? Mm -hmm. So watch. If we go to 8,800, that right there is going to be 1,900 away from the lows. That number there, the maximum loss, is going to go down to probably 173. And that's pretty cool, man. It's like, okay, 173. Then you're on the other side, your max profit is 826. But that's at the 16,000. Well, there's no reason that if, in fact, it starts bottoming out at that 880 level, we know how volatile it is. That can go from like the uh, 8,800 level to 12,000, yeah, pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, so that's the way that I'm, I'm looking at, at them in order to trade them. You know, what you want to um, figure out is this. I, I haven't got, wrapped my head around this totally because I'm just not trading them like you are. What you want to wrap your head around is this, is that as you're buying or you're not selling them, right, mm -hmm. what can you do here, because you know you have the defined risk, right, and then go over to the other exchanges you're trading on and arbitrage those babies. Mm. Okay. Now stay stay right there because we're going to talk okay. about this because this Sounds is good. this is a doable deal, folks. You just got to put some thought into it. We're talking with Paul, um, and we're talking about Bitcoin. We're talking about the Nix platform, and how it works and what you can do. So, check this out, Paul. The when Bitcoin started trading, first it traded on the CBOE, then it went to the CME. Okay. So that's those are the largest floors, right? So if we bring up X, I'm going to show you some XBT. If we bring up XBT right now, and okay, so you're down $1,400. And what you're going to see out here is that you're going to see the, I get the volume characteristic on the right hand side. So the CBOE has done 4,000 contracts, right? 4,100. The CME has done 1,700. Now, you've got to multiply the uh, 1,700 by 5. And so you can see what's happening here. The CM, CME is going way over volume-wise of the CBOE. Okay? Now, what has happened here is that inside the CME, which is a trip, is that a company called IG, which is the largest legal spread better in the world, over in Europe, spread betting is, is legal, okay? Just like in Vegas and all that, right? Well, IG owns Nadex. So the way that they can offer, this is pretty cool. So we're going to get to how you can hedge it too. So they own Nadex, right? So in order to have defined risk, you have to have this hedged off some way. So what's going on is that right now, as of last week, 
Bloomberg came out with an article that this company IG, they didn't realize that they own Nadex when they're writing this. I don't, I don't believe they did, or they would have put it in there. They, they are 20% of the market. Well, that's how many people are trading Bitcoin on the Nadex platform right now. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And yeah. so they, they can hedge it out. Okay, because that's what it is. Market makers, folks, are in business to work on the spread, not to basically be directional. The way that market makers stay in business is that they work on the spread. If you're directional, you can blow up. Okay, now that being said, I've thought about it somewhat, but this is the way that I would think I'd do it. You know, you've explained to us how if Bitcoin is going up or going down, right, mm -hmm. the other currencies are moving with it not lockstep, but they're basically moving with it also, right? Yes. So picture this. You wouldn't have to be, you could be buying and selling this intraday, the Bitcoin position. But what I would do, I would start looking at the aspect that, okay, if Bitcoin's going up so much or going down so much, what is Ethereum, or Litecoin, or Ripple doing? You following me? Mm -hmm. So that on one aspect, you plan on making all your money on the Coinbase or wherever that is you're trading, right? Right. But what you're doing is that you're hedging this on this position all week long. I see what you're saying. You know, uh, if you put some thought into it, man, I think there's a real trade there. And, uh, you know, I suspect it'll be here for time to tell whether, because the computers will get hold of this. Right now, the only that right now the only hedging mechanism is actually IG doing it, which I'm not suggesting to do the Bitcoin because you don't have to compete with them. You see what I'm saying? What you can do, you bring in this one more step. You know, you could do it that way too, but you bring yeah. in it one more step, which would be pretty cool. You definitely popped the light off in my head. I'm going to work on that this afternoon. Good. And then come back to us because I, I know how to do it. it. What it does, folks, is this. If you're going to take some time with it, just sit down. It'll take three or four hours maybe to, to in, in pencil it in and watch it first. First, you get to pencil it in, figure out what you think is going to happen. Then you get to look at yeah. and see if that happened and how close you come to it. And then what you want to know is what the difference in the spread is. But I suspect it's going gonna, it's gonna to fly. And this will fly until all the computers get hold of it. When, when pro shares first come out, I had a field day for a year and a half. And where the field day was then, I'll show you where the field day was then. If you were listening, you knew it. Okay, so watch this. We go to, uh, I'll just pull up the TWM. And what the difference was, what I was doing then, I was taking the net asset value. Right here, you can see the TWM is trading 1650. Net asset value is 1653 right now, okay? Well, the first year and a half, that wasn't like that. That's only three pennies. The first year and a half, those spreads would be about 17 to 20 cents. And as you're buying and selling thousands of shares, that was a lot of money, man. And then the computers, wow. the, then the computers took over. The computers will eventually take over, you know, because what will end up happening is that the high uh, frequency traders, um, and just computers in general, someone's going to write a program saying, if this happens, this happens, you do that. But you have some time here, man, you know, because it just. I'm going to look into that um, definitely this afternoon. One of the things that I also wanted to share with the listeners, because um, I know this is very. It's, Wild West and some of the exchanges that I trade on, which is it was with only small amounts of money. So in case I lose yep, it all, it's right. not the um, But GDAX, which is Coinbase, is the same company. Um, they are 100% FDIC insured, and 90% of their coins are kept offline. So if there's any type of hack, like you heard these exchanges getting hacked yes. before, and all the coins getting you know stole, right? It won't happen on a GDAX because. 90% of them are, are held offline, and you have the FDIC insurance uh, backing you up as well. So I feel comfortable with GDAX, recommending people to trade on, on GDAX. That's interesting. So the FDIC the insurance, are, I wonder how that works, because that means they're a bank. You can, it can only be a bank to have FDIC insurance. Interesting. We'll have to figure that out. I lose them? Cooking, brother. Thanks so much, man.